I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the February March 2023 Chemnitz Dialong live stream. In this dialong we were inspired by the beautiful speckled scales of a ball python that is actually a house guest in my home for a few months in early 2023. Timmy is a 22-year-old ball python who Keith and I actually knew back while we were in college and so we're just temporarily house-sitting for the snake and holding him and looking closely and seeing these beautiful speckles on his skin made me know I really wanted to adapt this into yarn. I'm not going to show any full photos of Timmy until the very end of the video. The only pictures will be of the inspiration photo, which is the close-up of the scales. But I will let you know before there are any actual pictures of snakes. I started out swatching various browns and sort of golden brown colors that I have in my Dharma acid dye collection. And I did two versions of the swatching this time. I speckled the dry dye powder onto our wet yarn, but then I left one area as the speckles and then in the other I tapped out and sort of blended that color so that way we could see what the color might look like more when it's combined. And I'm really glad that I did this because there's some colors that were a little bit too red for what I wanted for our color inspiration. And then there's other colors that in the speckles, they had a little bit of blue or a little bit of green. And those were colors I didn't want to bring in to our project. And so this is not something I've done with every single color I've swatched whenever I've done crude swatches, but if, you're planning something and you want to make sure that your speckles, if they're going to break, that they're not going to break in a way you don't want, it's worth doing a little bit of test. And it doesn't have to be on a full skein. It can be on a mini skein and you can keep track of that in your notes as a reference. But anyway, I think that this finished yarn that I left with speckles and then some more patches of color is really, really beautiful. But you can see how some of the little greens and sometimes some of those blues really show up towards the end of the speckling process. For the main colorway, we did multiple different layers of dyeing. I started out dyeing the yarn a really low depth of shade of pecan brown. I wanted to start with a sandy color base. I didn't want it to be white. I wanted there to be a little bit of depth to that color. Then I added on removable nylon zip ties to create some pockets of resist on the yarn. I didn't want the lighter sections and the deeper sections to be that regular. I wanted there to be some variation in there. Once I had the zip ties on the yarn, I used a mixture of some dry teddy bear brown, some dry pecan brown, and then even a little bit of some fawn to bring some more reddish tones undertones in there, I guess. And I use that to work all of those colors uh, through the exposed sections of the yarn. We heat set that, remove the zip ties, and then we needed to get started layering on more color. And of course, I don't have notes here. <laughs> this is where the notes that I wrote down stopped. But I mixed up uh, a little bit, I think, of pecan brown with a little bit of some golden straw in there to make it a little bit more yellow. I think those are the colors that we used. Uh, it was certainly a combination of some brown and one of those more yellow colors that I was using. And with a foam brush, I painted that in the middle of the exposed sections. And you can just barely see that color in here while still having some of the tan exposed. And you can see that here as well. I didn't bother heat setting the yarn again at this process. I then went straight to speckling. Checking back on the replay, I did use golden straw and pecan brown for that color I painted on. And then I mixed a brown uh, in with some citric acid so we could create the fine speckles. I had intended to use teddy bear brown. That was my plan. But looking at the replay and looking at the color here where it's a little bit redder, I definitely used chocolate brown. Uh, and so that was not the color I had meant to use because chocolate brown is a little bit more red toned. But I think that this yarn is still really pretty and from far away, you can't really tell that it's reddish. But anyway, I think that I nailed the inspiration. 
Finally, we have our Yarn Mop slash Leave No Dye Behind skein, which seems to now be a brown with some almost reddish purple and yellow undertones, which I think is pretty cool. I thought it was really interesting that while I was swatching the colors, there really didn't seem to be a very yellowish brown in the Dharma Acid Dye collection. The browns either were fairly neutral or fairly red leaning, orange leaning, less of the more yellow side. If I remember correctly, I think Jacquard's brown color is a much more yellowish brown color and could have worked really perfectly for this project. Uh, the, I love Jacquard dyes, but the jars that I have are really small, and so I prefer the larger jars from Derma, and that's why I tend to use those more often. But I do need to do a swatching all of my brown dyes video at some point. And so don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss either a new pre-filmed video or a live stream because sometimes live streams happen pretty last minute. And if you want to make sure you can catch me live, interact in real time and ask questions, that's the best way to do it. And now it's time to take a look at the yarn that you dyed, also inspired by our inspiration photo. It's fun to see the differences in the types of techniques. And I was really curious to know how many people would pull in speckles versus not. Because certainly you don't have to go very literal with the application, but sometimes a picture just sparks an idea of a type of colorway in your brain. If you would like the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo to be featured in a future Chemnitz Dye Along recap, just share your creations that were inspired by the photo on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dye Along or on Facebook by replying on the public Chemnitz Facebook page, replying with a photo comment. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. Could I have created this type of colorway in fewer steps? Probably. Instead of doing resist, I could have used brushes and hand painted the darker brown sections, done a brief steam set to set part of that color, and then come in and done the rest of the hand painting. The reason why I would apply some heat in between the darker brown and then doing that paler brown followed by speckles is that if that dark brown wasn't set at all yet, then as you move the yarn, you would get some more transfer of that brown onto the other sections, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but it's why I would just add a layer of heat in the middle, so then I would know where the light patches remained. Have you pre-ordered your mini skein set from the 2023 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series yet? Pre-orders are open and the series starts June 5th, so there's plenty of time to order your yarn so you can unwrap your package and watch exactly how I dyed that set. Each mini skein set comes with five 20 gram mini skeins on a variety of different yarn bases. There are a lot of options and there's a lot of fun extras in there as well. Plus there's also some add-on skeins. So if you want even more yarn, there's options for that as well. You can find more information in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. By now, a little content warning, I am gonna show some pictures of Timmy the snake. And so uh, if you don't want to see that, well, thank you so much for watching. And if you would like to see Timmy, well, here we go. How did I end up with a temporary resident in my home? Well, uh, it comes down to alumni connections through college. So Keith and a couple of his fraternity brothers got Shamrock Timmy while they were still in college. And Timmy was around and under Keith's care while I met him. Um, and so there are some really old pictures of me hanging out with Mr. Timmy. Once we graduated, Timmy's care moved on to some of the other fraternity brothers and was passed down for many years. I don't know exactly how he ended up no longer living at the fraternity, but he's now under the care of uh, an alum that we hadn't met before. And so when they were gonna be going out of town, for a few months, uh, they looked around to the alumni to see if anyone could care for Timmy. And so, uh, yeah, we said yes. And now we've been having temporary care of a snake, which I am both really enjoying, but I don't think I would get a snake on my own. They live a really long time. The care is minimal, but I always worry about making sure my animals are happy. And it's a lot harder when it's a creature that cannot really communicate very well with you, like say a dog can, and so I get a little stressed. But anyway, 
here's just a fun side by side of uh, 21, 22 year old me and then 39 year old me holding Timmy. But yeah, he's a very, very sweet boy and it's been a lot of fun uh, hanging out with him. And I think he looks pretty darn close to this yarn, so I'm thrilled about that. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.